welcome back. Uh, it's day two of the teardown and rebuild of this Voron printer. Um, it's actually it's kind of cold in the studio today, so hopefully I can push through. It's I'm going to have to wear a jacket for sure. Um, but we made good progress yesterday. We've uh, taken apart most of everything above the electronics compartment here. Uh, all the side panels and everything are off of this thing. I have a huge mess laying around the studio here, so I'm going to have to clean this up and uh, organize some of the screws and hardware and stuff before we continue on. Um, but we have the gantry now free. It's over here. And so I think first thing today we're going to disassemble this thing and reassemble the new XY gantry. And then after that we'll probably work on the Z drives and if we have time after all of those things we'll get started with the electronics compartment down below. Um, so yeah, that's the plan for today. Let's get to it. Okay, so while I work on disassembling the old gantry here, let's talk about some of the changes that I plan to make in the new version and why I'm excited about them, even though they kind of seem minor. In my mind, they're some of the best things that we're gonna do here in the new version of the printer because we're removing parts and we're making the end result simpler. So you'll see when we finally finish building the new gantry, there are actually a lot fewer parts on the new gantry than there were on the old gantry. And with all the same functionality or maybe even better functionality, we're gonna be able to still simplify and remove things. So the first thing that we're removing is all of the cable chains and the different pieces that were there to route wires into and out of the cable chains. I mentioned in the previous video in this series that I'm switching over to use CAN bus electrical setup to run the wiring up to the tool head as opposed to the, the default, the standard Voron setup running the wires through the cable chains. So we're going from about, I don't know, 16 to 20 or so wires all running through these cable chains to just four wires that are running through a single umbilical and that'll run from the back of the printer straight to the top of the tool head and we don't have to deal with the gantry at all as far as how that wiring works. The other thing that used to run with wires up to the gantry were the two wires that run to the physical switches that were being used as X and Y end stops for the homing procedure for the printer. And we're removing that as well. So those switches are going away completely and the wires that needed to run to them obviously are going away as well. And I'm gonna be using sensorless homing, which is a setup that allows us to just use the stepper motor drivers to detect when the print head hits the end of the axis and we don't have to have a physical switch anymore. So with all of that removed, we don't have any wires running to this gantry at all anymore, except for the two for the A and B motors and there's not really any way to avoid that. Those motors have to be here on the gantry. When I disconnected the extrusions that had the linear rails on them from the gantry, I played around a bit with the movement of the carriage on those linear rails and decided that they probably needed to be relubricated a little bit. And so I don't have video footage of this, but I did slide the carriage all the way to the each end of the linear rail very carefully to make sure I didn't spill out any of the ball bearings that are inside the carriage. And I used a little syringe with some PTFE lube to relubricate those and get them, get that lube worked around inside the, the carriage and make sure that everything was moving good and smoothly again. It probably wasn't necessary. They were moving okay before, but the re-lubing of those definitely made a difference in my mind as far as how smooth the, the carriage was moving on those rails. So we should be good to go with that when we rebuild the gantry. And there was one other bit of cleanup that I realized I needed to do when I started disassembling these XY joints and the AB motor mounts there are those bearing stacks inside of all of these parts where the belts run over the top of those back and forth as the printer runs, and those had collected a bit of gunk over time. So I just made sure to dunk all of those bearings in just a little bit of isopropyl alcohol and clean them up and dry them off really well, make sure all the gunk was out of the motion part of those bearings so that they're clean and ready to go, and we'll reuse those again when we reassemble the new gantry. Now it's time to start reassembling the parts for the new gantry. So here you'll see everything that we need to assemble the A and B motor mounts. And all that's different here from a standard Voron build is that we're using the pin mod, which is a slight modification of these printed parts that replaces all of the M5 screws that the bearing stacks used to run on with five millimeter pins instead. I guess the idea there is that if you have a flat pin surface rather than a screw surface for those bearings to run on, they could potentially run a bit smoother and you know bind up less over time. 
So here you'll see me putting one of those pins in and then building the bearing stacks on top of those pins as we sandwich the two plastic printed pieces together and then we put the motor in place. It's really a fairly standard Voron assembly other than that small mod for the pins. You'll see here I spend quite a bit of time working with this little printed guide part to make sure that the pulleys are set at exactly the correct distance up away from these motors. And I think this is one of the most important things you can do when you're building one of these Voron Core XY printers to make sure that your motion system is gonna run smoothly is to get these pulleys to exactly precisely the right height on each of the two motors so that everything lines up and the belts are running just super smooth throughout the system. So if you're building one of these for the first time or if you're rebuilding one like I am doing now, I would say make sure to take the time to double and triple check the spacing of these pulleys and get them just dialed in perfectly so that your belts are gonna run really smooth. Moving on now to the XY joints. So these will sit at either end of the X extrusion and attach it to the rest of the gantry to allow it to slide up and down along the Y axis. And again, these aren't any different from a standard Voron build except for this pin mod. So the five millimeter screws that you see here are used to hold the two sandwiched pieces together, the two printed parts, and the five millimeter rods are replacing what used to be screws and those will be used to put our bearing stacks on for our belts to run on top of. And now we've arrived at what is the first bit of brand new build here on this gantry. This is something that's not standard on a Voron 2.4 and it is a replacement for the front idlers. So these are Rama Lama's front idlers, fun to say by the way, Rama Lama. I'll leave a link to the GitHub page for these down in the description of this video, along with links to all the other things that we have and will talk about. And all these do is replace the front idlers that are used for tensioning your A and B belts. And in my opinion, at least, I think that they are designed in such a way that the load on the printed parts is a lot better and is probably less prone to cracking if you were to try to over tighten those belts. And so here you'll see me putting them together. It's fairly standard. You've got some heat set inserts to put in. And then really the only tricky bit is the little bearing stack that goes inside of this gray piece here is really tough to, to fit in if you try to create the stack first and then slide the whole thing in all at once. So what I found is the easiest thing to do is to put the pieces in one at a time, so the little spacer and then the bottom bearing and then the top bearing and then the top spacer slides in. It's a little bit of a tight fit, but you can get it to slide in the top there. And working with a little screwdriver or something else that fits down through that hole the whole way so that you're keeping everything lined up. And that's probably the easiest way to do it. And then again, just like with our pin mod, instead of putting a screw through these to keep the bearing stack in line, we put a little pin, a five millimeter pin in place, and we just press it in place and we're good to go. And then this piece fits inside the main body of the idler and we've got two screws that are used to tighten it up. So we put those in here and we can use those later on. I'll keep them loose for now, but we'll use them later on to tighten the belts once we get the belts run through the gantry. And then there's a little front cover piece here that just fits on the front with a magnet that you press in place and we'll sit there to, to cover those screws and make the front of the, the whole assembly look a little bit nicer. All right, so it's time to assemble the gantry now from all these components that we've been building. So I have them all laid out here on the desk with the hardware that I need and the extrusions with the linear rails are here as well. As I mentioned earlier, I re-lubricated these things so they slide really nicely on the rails and I've put these little rubber stops in both ends of the rails as well that came with my original kit just so they don't accidentally slide off the sides while we're working and I'll be taking those off obviously after we've got this thing assembled and they're held in place. So the assembly process here is pretty straightforward. We just insert T-nuts into each one of these extrusions and then line up first starting with the back corners, the A and B drive mounts, 
and line the extrusions up with one another and use our M5 screws to screw everything together. I'm not tightening them down super tight at this point because I am gonna to need to square and rack the gantry once we've got it on the machine itself. So just tight enough to hold everything together so it's not gonna slide apart at this moment and that should be good enough for now. Next, our front idlers go on the front of each of the two side extrusions. And I don't think I mentioned this earlier when we were building them, but these two front idlers are exactly the same piece. But when you put them on, one is turned opposite from the other. And so the offset of the little bearing stack that was inside of there will line up correctly with the appropriate belt, just based on the fact that one is flipped upside down compared to the other one when you put them on the fronts of these extrusions. And then the final part of the gantry build is just our x-axis extrusion here. We'll attach the x-y joints on either side of it. Then we'll flip the whole gantry over and attach those joints onto the carriages that are on the y-axis linear rails. And then we should be good to go. That's going to do it for this part of the Voron rebuild series. If you've got any questions about any of the mods or any of the other work that I've done in this video, leave them in the comments below. I read and answer everything that you guys ask, so I'll do my best to answer any questions you have. And we'll be back next time with probably some Z drive stuff and the electronics compartment down at the bottom of the printer. So I'll see you then.